Hello Internet! In this video I'd kind of like to take our circle pixel shader that we've been working on and kind of take it one step back. Uh, I don't really know how many more videos we'll do on this. This It seems like we're kind of wrapping up here. Uh, but what I want to do is, last time we made it so we could rotate the pixels of this shader. Uh, so we have this rotation amount and that actually allows us to spin this effect. Uh, so we can have like our pixels at 90 degree angles so they, they go straight up and down or we can go at like 45 degree angles and sort of get these nice diamonds. I want to be able to do that with a pixel shader as well um, so we don't get these circles we just get like diamonds if we do this 45 uh, and I'm hoping that that's relatively straightforward but we'll, we'll see. <clears throat> I'm really hoping that we can take what we've learned for this circle based version and then bring it over into into just a normal pixel thing, um, and so kind of kind of taking taking what we've learned here and, and taking it a step backwards. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, if you're not familiar, there's I think five videos now that get us to this point, uh, and you could go and watch those and kind of get caught up. Uh, but we're going to be building off of a lot of what we've already done. Uh, so if you aren't familiar with that, you might be a bit lost. Uh, but I'll I'll try to catch you up on the way. <laughs> so let's call this our diamond pixel shader. Uh, while I'm doing this, I should also mention this code is open source out on, my, uh, out on the World of Zero GitHub. Uh, so if you want this and want to play around with it, go check that out. There's a link in the description uh, and it's, yeah, go for it. Uh, so let's grab the rotation width and height, I think. Uh, for the most part, we're going to just be copying a lot of this code. I'm going to copy it uh, section by section just so we can kind of get an idea of what each section is intended to do uh, but you don't have to do that you can just copy the entire thing and then and then place things in it. or just grab the code because that's gonna be there uh, so the width height and rotation width and height are the number of pixels high and wide the shader is going to be and rotation is just in degrees the rotation of our object uh, of, of the, the thing we're rotating uh, so those are the properties that Unity sees. We need those inside of our shader. And so we're going to grab those here <clears throat> and just insert those. And then, then everything else ends up inside of the surface shader. Uh, since we're using a surface shader, it's going to be lit. Uh, but what we're doing is using a rotation matrix to, to do the rotation. I talked previously about how rotation matrices works. But effectively, it rotates around 0, 0, and takes an object and just sort of spins it around that uh, by whatever our rotation amount is. By default, these cosine signs, uh, those are going to be working in radians. Uh, so this value converts the rotation amount we plug in from degrees into radians, and then we can use it in our cosine and our sine. Uh, so that's what's going on there. And then float 2 by 2 just represents a 2 by 2 matrix. Uh, since we're working in 2D coordinate space uh, with U and V coordinates because we're working in, in UV space, um, we need a 2D matrix in order to be able to do that rotation. Uh, so that should be the rotation done. <clears throat> and then the way this shader works is it moves everything over by half. This is done so that when we move over by half, I mentioned we were rotating around the center, uh, 0, 0. This puts our center in the middle of our image instead of in the corner. Uh, so it means that when we rotate things, we actually get something that makes a little bit more sense. Uh, it should all still compile. Uh, but like I was, like was kind of demonstrating previously, we, we can rotate this. And you can see that the outsides are all rotating. If I don't offset it by that minus 0.5, uh, half of our UV space, we wouldn't be rotating around this middle here. We'd be rotating around the outside bottom left corner. Uh, and I don't want that. So yeah, that that isn't necessarily required. It will still work without that, but it's nice to have. Uh, so what did we do now? We are here. Uh, and so the position needs to be multiplied by the rotation matrix and the position. Uh, so we're just effectively modifying our position matrix. Like, that's not how that works. Gotta copy it first. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> and so uh, you can't just multiply matrices by one another. 
uh, or matrices by vertices, uh, you have to use this multiplication function and it takes a matrix on the left side and a vector on the right hand side. Uh, your matrix should have the same dimension as your vector. Uh, so we're multiplying a 2D matrix by a 2D vector. Uh, and so that gets us a position that has now been rotated. And so what we can do effectively with this is we've taken our UV space, which goes from 0 to 1 in both spaces, and we've kind of tilted it on its side here. Uh, and so by doing that, we actually have these nice right angles that were going perpendicular, forming pixels effectively. Um, we've turned that into something that's sort of a diagonal thing uh, or whatever a rotation is. Uh, and so that is what's going to actually make it so we can get diamonds instead of squares. And so now this next code is what divides everything into pixels. Uh, and so the idea here is as I copy this over, we want to take our position and multiply it by the size of the pixels we have. Uh, so we're taking a, in this case, I think I have the default as eight and eight. Uh, so UV coordinates go from zero to one. We kind of talked about that. Uh, and they're a smooth thing. So it'll be zero, 0 0.1, and all the numbers in between up to one. Uh, and now we've rotated that and all of that fun stuff. But what we want is we want fixed pixels. And so what this is going to do is increase that zero to one to some additional space. Uh, so we're increasing this to uh, zero to eight, for example, in both dimensions. And then what we're doing is rounding that value. Uh, so when previously we had zero to one and all the values in between, now we just have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, and eight, or, or whatever our rounding formula is. I'm using the ceiling, uh, but any rounding formula should work. And then once we do that, we move everything back down into that zero to one space. So we can use that to look up our texture uh, color down here. Because what UV space is used to do is look up positions inside of a texture. Uh, and so we need that in zero to one space. Otherwise, if it goes off, uh, depending on how your image and your texture is configured, you're going to get different results. But uh, that's just what we want. So yeah, there we go. Uh, that should, if we've done this correctly, get us our pixels. And then the next thing we want to do is unrotate everything. Uh, because we've rotated the entire shape, we've gotten these pixels. Effectively, what we've defined here is pixels. But those are those are the pixels, um, and they're not where the color is. If we try to look up our colors, our our texture coordinates using that rotated matrix, we're going to get a rotated texture because that's that's what we've done. We've rotated it, uh, and so we don't want that. We want to unrotate everything. Uh, we probably don't don't need this matrix. Uh, in the previous one, we used a matrix because we were doing matrix stuff, and so it made sense. But really what we're doing is getting to the same position that we had, effectively doing what we did to this position. Uh, so getting all those pixels and everything. The only difference is we don't want it to be rotated, and we don't want it to be shifted. Uh, and so what this is doing is unrotating it, and then shifting it back over. So we end up with those uh, zero to one spaces. Uh, so that is what's going on here. And then I think we're mostly good. Uh, this is used, if I remember correctly, to calculate our microspaces. And so the microspaces are something we use for drawing our circles. So what this is actually doing is, is doing 0 to 1 inside of each of those pixels. We don't need this uh, because this is all circle code. So both of these are dividing it into a 0 to 1 space. And then this uh, second bit down here is actually what is calculating the circle. Both of those are strictly for circle stuff. So if we leave them out, we should just end up with pixels instead uh, because that's sort of sort of where we are right now. Um, I hope this is making sense. <laughs> and so the next thing that we've done is look up the color. And this is really, I think, the last last step to this, if I'm remembering all of this correctly. Uh, so we can just swap out this color lookup with our new one. 
The only difference is we're using the cell position instead of the UV coordinate that we get up here. And so this cell position is coming from here, right there. And so that should hopefully make everything happy. Uh, and I'm wondering if this, mm, yeah, no, this makes sense. Uh, because we're, we're rounding things on the diagonal, we should get things into that space. And then when we unrotate them, or when we unrotate them, we're using that to look up our pixel color thing. So I think this boundary should make sense. Uh, I've kind of kind of thrown this together really quickly, so we're gonna see if this works. Uh, I'm hoping so. Um, but I, really, what I'm trying to do is just pull a bunch of the things we've already done out of that old shader, or not really old, but into that shader that does something we don't really want into this no new thing without having to kind of like re-engineer the whole thing because that just seems like a lot of work. Uh, I forgot a D in this shader. That's going to bug me. Uh, there we go. And so now we end up with these diamond shapes instead of our circles. Uh, so we can rotate this. We have our rotation. We should be able to just kind of rotate this as we were and end up with, yeah, a normal pixel shader. But we can rotate the pixels inside of it. Uh, so if I were to zoom out camera's super close there, but you can kind of get an idea of what this ends up looking like. Uh, the rounding on the tops there is caused by our rounding function. What's actually happening is we're looping around to the other side. Uh, we can fix that. So we're using this texture. If we don't want that to happen, we have this uh, wrap mode equal to repeat which means that if it goes off of the end of one side, it's going to start on the other side. Um, so effectively, if you go to, from zero to one and then you go above one, you end up back at the zero side and just keep going. Uh, so one is equal to two is equal to three and so forth. Um, and, and that just sort of for, for repeating textures, it makes it look really nice. This isn't a repeating texture, uh, so we probably don't want that. What we can do is actually clamp this and you'll see those instantly go away. What that's telling this to do is if it would go off the edge, use the nearest one. Uh, so if we, go, if we go off the edge in the top right, for example, that's white. Uh, and so we'd end up with white instead of wrapping all the way around if we were going on the diagonal and getting the cyan or whatever color. Uh, so that is sort of textures. Uh, there's another, you might see these kind of lines. It's kind of hard to see. Um, but we were getting these lines. You can get rid of some of it with like turning off MIP maps, uh, and that just kind of gets rid of some of the optimization. They're still there though, and I feel like there, there's some optimization that I'm I'm missing. Maybe it's uh, some sort of that. Yeah, it's the filter mode. <laughs> so if we turn the filter mode down to point, uh, that's that fixes most of it. Uh, you can. For, since we're pixelating this in the first place, we don't need uh, all the filters. That that That's overkill, probably. Uh, so we can just turn that off, and we end up with this. Uh, and so now we can get pixels that we can rotate without having to, to do anything. Um, so hopefully this is, hopefully that was useful. I, I went through it super quick, um, and, and that was kind of intentional, because hopefully this is like a, a review of some of the stuff we've done. And it's just sort of showing another application for some of what we've already built with this previous shader. Um, this code will be out on GitHub, so you can go and grab it and play with it yourself. If this was confusing, I would recommend going and watching the previous videos. And if you already have, then leave a comment and let me know. Um, I don't know. I've never really done a video like this, where it's kind of gone, gone and like re-referenced old things without really like redoing it. Um, and so I don't really know how well this is going to work. So I'm hoping hoping you, you'll have some feedback on, on whether this is useful or whether whether we should stick to, to other traditional stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this video. So if you really liked it, give it a thumbs up. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. So until then, see you, Internet.